Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. So in this video, I am going to cover seven things that you need to know about being a foster care parent. Hi, my name is Lacrys Bundy from go.lbundylaw.com. I am an adoption attorney and I help families finalize their adoptions. I do all kinds of adoptions. So foster care is especially close to my heart just because you can be a safe family for children who are put in foster care because of you know, the abuse or neglect or something that happened with the biological parents. So when you take your foster care parent training, they will, you know, train you really well, right? They'll show you the things to expect and um, what you need to know about the kids' emotions and you'll have a caseworker that's with you. And uh, most foster care agencies, they do really well at helping foster parents as you start bringing kids into your home and they're there to answer any questions that you have. However, there are a few things that you know, the agency just don't cover. It's kind of like, you know, after you get married, you think you know your boyfriend really well or your fiance, and then you get married and you're like, oh, right? <laughs> like, you know, you start living together and now you see those things that you never saw before. I feel like that's kind of like that a little bit with foster parenting. There are some things you just don't find out until the kids actually come into your home. So in this video, I'm going to cover seven things that you probably should know if you're considering fostering. Now for the best adoption advice, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to be notified when I post a new video every week. All right, so the first thing that you should probably know if you are going to become a foster parent is you want to have a stash of clothes and shoes available. A lot of times when kids get picked up by the police from their house and they go to here in Nebraska, it's called Project Harmony to get examined. You know, the caseworker has so much time to have the kids, you know, put their stuff together. So a lot of times you'll see these kids with not very many clothes and not a lot of shoes with them. And so they come to your home and you're like, oh, you have two shirts and a pair of pants and like a pair of shoes. And they're going to be with you for you don't know how long. So it's always good to think about that in advance. If you know the age of the child that's coming to you and their sex, it's probably a good idea to just run to the store real quick and grab, you know, a couple of clothes and some shoes their size just so they have, you know, something to wear when they come to your home. The second thing that you should probably know is that you may not know the entire family history of your foster child when they come into your house. So again, when it's something that's really quick, you know, like they had to get the kid out of there, they had to take the kid over here to be examined and then they need a foster home tonight and you say, yes, let this kid come over. You may not know if they have allergies to a certain plant, right? Like you may not know if they have food allergies. You may not know all these things until maybe a few days later or a week or two later when the dust has settled and you can actually sit and talk to your caseworker. So just be mindful of that. The third thing to keep in mind is just think through like these kids are going to get to visit their biological mom and dad. That's a part of the foster care process. And when you go through your training, you'll understand and you'll learn that foster care, again, is about reuniting the kid back to their biological family. So you're here to be a safe place for them to be able to be a kid until they go back home. And so just keep in mind that you know, after visits with their with their biological parents can be really traumatic for these children because you step, put yourself in their shoes for a minute and you think about this child, this is all they know, right? They're at home with their mom and dad. All of a sudden, one day, a cop comes into their house, takes them out of their home, takes them to a strange place to get examined, and then drops them off at a, str at a stranger's home. And then this kid is supposed to just be okay with this, right? And not have any tantrums, have good behaviors. And listen, you cannot expect that of a child, right? Like they don't know how to process their emotions. They don't know how to process what's going on at the time. So when they actually go to get to see their mom and dad one or two or three days a week, however that's set up, can you imagine like they see their mom and dad now they have to leave them again and come back to your home. So just keep that in mind, you know, as you are thinking about going through this process is to be really mindful of what these kids must be going through as they're, you know, being transferred into a foster home and going through visits. So you're probably going to see behaviors escalate um, after visits with their biological families. When I used to work at a foster care agency, uh, my foster parents told, you know, they give me stories about these all the time. It's nothing to be scared about, just something for you to be prepared about. The fourth thing that you need to know is that the foster care caseworker, they're on your side. Okay, whatever foster care agency you signed up with that you're licensed through, their caseworker is there to help you. So make sure that you lean on that caseworker. They want to help you succeed. They want you to be the best foster care parent that you can be. And so they're there to help you. So make sure that you build a really good relationship with your caseworker. 
Again, I can tell you, I used to work for a foster care agency and I was a foster care specialist. So that meant that I was actually assigned families that were my families. So I would be the support for foster parents. And so I had all these different families that I was supporting. And I can tell you that it makes a huge difference when the person as a kids worker that you are assigned to, they are communicating with you, letting you know what's going on with the child. It makes, it made my job easier when my foster parents would call me and say, hey, this is what's going on with the foster child. Can we enroll them in these sports? And it just helped me keep tabs about what was going on with the child. So make sure that you build a really good relationship with your caseworker. Number five, the time commitment. So when you become a foster care parent, I think it's, it's hard to kind of imagine, right, what life is like when you have a foster child in your home. So one of the things to keep in mind is you have to make sure that your foster child is getting all the medical help that they need, all the school stuff that they need. This kid that comes into your home may not have ever gone to the doctor, may not have ever had their eyes checked, or they may, have, may not have ever gone to the dentist, or they may have some type of mental health issue that was never checked. And so I, part of what you do as a foster care parent is to make sure that they are up to date on the medical thing. So you take them to the dentist and get their teeth cleaned and take them to the eye doctor if they need to, to get those glasses, if they have hearing issues, you know, get all those things gonna straighten out for them. And that can be a huge time commitment on your part, dropping them off to the school that they were going to before they came into your home and things of that nature. So just be mindful that, I mean, you can lean on your caseworker and you can ask your agency, for help with rides and transportation, but it is a time commitment, obviously, to have um, another child in your home. Number six, and I think this is a great reminder for you guys, is Medicaid pays for nearly everything, you guys. Medicaid will pay for all of the medical things, so you don't have to worry about taking your kid to the doctor, taking them to the psychiatrist, taking them to the psychologist, taking them to all these other places. Medicaid will pay for nearly anything like their surgeries and if they have to get braces and all that kind of stuff so if you're kind of scared about oh my gosh like i have to pay for all these things for my foster kid no every foster child comes with their own medicaid card and number and it covers everything so you don't have to worry about that also the the your foster child school expenses are covered daycare expenses are covered and even for uh, school lunches are covered so really it's like you are, I mean, the state tries really hard to make it really easy for you to be a foster parent. So really what you're giving is your time commitment and your emotional energy to invest in them while they're in your home. Number seven is just to keep in mind about strangers and visitors. So of course, when you become a foster parent and you have a child come into your home, you want to tell the world about what's going on and you want to share them with people and you want people to love on them and hug them. And that's just a natural part of being a parent, right? I mean, you have children and they have cousins and they have brothers and sisters and you know you take them everywhere and everybody gets to enjoy them and love on them just keep in mind for these foster kids that first they don't know you right so they have to get used to you so when grandma comes over grandpa comes over auntie uncles cousins and everybody else comes over all those people are strangers to your kids not only that in the their foster care case they also have their attorney involved a guardian ad litem the caseworkers there are so many people that they have never met before that all of a sudden are showing up and wanting to see them all the time so what i would encourage you to do is just gauge how your foster kiddo is doing when it comes to visitors like is it getting too much for them um do, do you need to back off a little bit do you need to do maybe just once a week um, you know, and just gauging that because that could also be a source of, you know, like behaviors if they're just feeling overwhelmed with all of the people that are all of a sudden like in their lives that they never knew before. So just keep those things in mind, like try to read their emotions and facial expressions if you can. And if you see that something is getting too much for them, just to back off and give them room to breathe, just like you would want for yourself, especially for you introverts out there. I'm sure you understand that when there's like way too many people around you, like, oh my gosh, I need to go and get away from people. So kiddos, they're the same way, you know? So that's the seventh thing that I would say um, to keep in mind as you are going in this foster care parenting journey. Here are a few bonus uh, tips and tricks just to also help you along your journey is, you know, like when your foster child is coming into your home, a great idea is to get a little canvas with maybe like the first letter of their first name and just let them paint it themselves in something that you can put in their room so they can own it and it can feel like it's their own special place or just doing any little thing that you can to make them feel like they're still in control 
for something, right? Like they can paint this over here or they can have this space for themselves that they can decorate however they want. And just little things that you can do to make them feel special and make them feel like they have space in your home and it's not another adult like encroaching over them and telling them what to do all the time. So I hope that helps. If you want more adoption tips like this, you should definitely join my adoption support and resource community. It is a free Facebook group that I set up a while ago, and it's just a community of people just like you who are coming together to just encourage each other along their journey. And I hop on there live every week to give more information and to answer questions. And I'm also going to be bringing guest speakers to help you along your journey. So if you're a family looking to grow your family through adoption, whether that's foster care adoption or um, step parent adoption, newborn adoption, international adoption, really any type of adoption, then really consider joining the group. I'm going to put a link for that in the description below. And I hope to see you there. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.